try a little different angle here. Uh, um, this real nice big germ Sunday. We're gonna do something with. Uh, the bird, Thunderbird, and uh, uh, Jeremy Culling's tour series has all been glue masked. Uh, first time doing a glue mask, so hopefully it works out fine. I just Elmer's glued it, let it dry, dries clear, obviously. So uh, everything should take dye except for where the glue is. Fingers crossed. So, um, kind of an interesting colored disc, so it's going to come out a little dark no matter what. Uh, you can't make a disc lighter. Um, So, uh, not going to try to make it real bright. I'm going to use some Dark Dungeon, uh, Pansy, and Neon Lemon Zest, which is a color combo I've done before that I really liked. Uh, I've not done it on this dark of a disc, so uh, I expect it all to be. Uh, a little darker. Um, might do a little key lime in there too, just uh, to brighten it up. Not necessarily brighten it up, but add a little bit of a brighter color to uh, kind of a darkish disc and darker colors. So. Um, I'm doing a little over half a teaspoon of dye. Color like neon lemon zest. Caribbean's the same for me. They're kind of bumpy. It's just a batch of mine are. So I try to make sure I put those colors in first. Let them start to absorb into the flow trough. A little. This is straight flow draw. I didn't show that part, sorry. Uh, no white glue, no acetone, no denatured alcohol. None of the above. Cut all that out. Cut full flow draw. Uh, and uh, about, I've been probably doing like three quarters of a teaspoon. Uh, on full cups like this. The Dark Dungeon I did a little under half a teaspoon and the Key Lime I did probably about the same, maybe a hair, maybe, maybe a half a teaspoon. And, uh, obviously a lot less uh, flow trial in the cup, you don't need as much dye. So as soon as I put those colors in first, the kind of bumpy ones, I stir them first. And end up stirring them all multiple times. No matter how much you think you've got it stirred all the way in, it's going to uh, bring some color back up. Some undissolved dye. Just keep scraping the sides. Keep breaking up those clumps. Ooh. I always have a towel. I just keep one in my lap. I need it. Destroyed about half the towels in our house. My wife's super excited about that. But, you know, cost of doing business, I'll tell her. Need to be out playing, but it's stormy and rainy here in Nashville. Got a tournament in a couple weeks. It'll be the first tournament I played in a year and a half or more. I had shoulder surgery last summer to repair a torn labrum that I had gotten back in like 04. Uh, went on to dislocate my shoulder like six or seven more times until finally last summer we made the decision to take a little time off work and work in a restaurant. It's my quote unquote real job. Uh, and uh, get it fixed. So, 
still dealing with that. It's it feels fine, but it gets sore, and I have absolutely no sidearm and no overhand of any sort. So I'm trying to channel my best James Conrad and throw those backhand turnovers. Just fun to throw. I like throwing them. It's not very good at it. Got a weird journey. Started playing disc golf in like '94, '95. I'm old. Played on and off, kind of regularly for a while. Helped install a second nine on a course we played and played a little ragtag weekly. This was pre YouTube, pre flight numbers. I mean, I just went out through big ugly hyzers and shit that flipped over and I didn't know why and whatever. And I moved to Nashville in 99. This was in Delaware. Just kind of played here and there. Uh, for a couple years and then kind of got away from it and then after I dislocated my shoulder in 04 playing adult like soccer and uh, I really didn't think there was a chance I was going to be able to throw a disc again. Fast forward to 2019 long story short my boys wanted to give it a try so I still had some discs left from back in the day and actually one crazy cool find I found I'll grab it here in a minute. Uh, I didn't even know I had. Uh, I have a first run Firebird, not a sexy bird, long before Nate. 2001, 2000, something like that. They were released. I bag it. It's flip eared in hell. But it's fun to throw. Fun little conversation piece sometimes. I've tried dyeing it multiple times. I don't know what kind of plastic it is. It doesn't say. It's not star. It doesn't really take dye, so I just kind of keep dyeing it here and there. Um, anyway, went out with the boys, and uh, if anyone's from Nashville, we played Big Daddy Kane. I played in a pair of Birkenstocks, and it's a seriously wooded course. But, uh, found that it didn't bother my shoulder to throw a disc, at least right hand, backhand. And I just went full bore back into it. And since I had played last, you know, the internet had become a thing and YouTube and about 47 disc manufacturers popped up. When I played, the only thing I knew of was Innova. I don't even think I was aware of disc craft back then. I had a shark, of course, and a rhino and cobra. I don't even know what else, but uh, I mean the the sport had changed drastically, obviously, in close to twenty years, and I just literally went head over heels back into it. Played all the time, still suck. Played all the time. Played a couple tournaments. And, um, then dislocated my shoulder a couple more times. Not playing, not doing anything really is what convinced me to go ahead and have surgery. I'm sure playing all the time didn't help my shoulder. So I had the surgery last July and fixed it. And around the middle of October, I think, I was probably able to finally kind of start throwing a little bit short courses, putters, and mid-ranges and stuff. And also decided to start mountain biking again with my son. So I had to quit doing that because it's basically a situation where if I crash, there's a by better than 50% chance I was going to the hospital to have my shoulder put back in. So, got back into riding, loved it, bought a new bike. Great time. And then, uh, November 11th, I think. November 5th. Crash broke my ankle in three places. Pretty much shattered it. Rotational shatter, they said. Instead of my foot being straight up and down at the end of my leg, it was over here. So needless to say, we had surgery on that. Out of work again, out of disc golf again. Uh, finally just started getting back to throwing probably April, March of this year, I guess. I don't know. So kind of a beginner for the third time in my life at 47, which is fun. So, Back to my original point, I got a tournament in three weeks, and two weeks. Um, not going to be good.
good. Playing MP40 though, or MA40, sorry. <laughs> no MP anything and not this golf game. Um, you can kind of see right there, a little dark streak. Just keep stirring until you get all the dye. You don't want those dark streaks running through your disc, obviously. And they could, especially get plumps. Just get a dark spot of dye on your disc. Just doesn't look so great. So. But, yeah, it's raining, thundering. Actually, it looks like the sun's trying to come out. I'm sure, it feels like the sauna. But. Anywho, enough about me. And my crappy disc golf game. They're looking pretty good. And like I said, this is not the most fun part. Just keep staring, keep scraping the sides. Kind of look at the sides and see if there's any dye because it never fails. I think I have it all and start pouring it. I end up finding a little streak of dye. I shouldn't say it never fails. Got my better at it. But once we put silicone in here in a second, uh, you only want to stir it a couple times with the silicone oil. So if you find a clump of dye in your cup when you're pouring it, it's bad. Kind of screwed because you don't want to stir the low troll up a lot again because it's going to stir your silicone up a lot which is going to give you uh, smaller cells. If that's what you're looking for, go for it. Alright, I think we're good. Everybody stirred. Scrape the stick once in a while, obviously get the dye off the stick. So my primary colors here obviously are going to be the, the neon lemon and the pansy. Um, that neon lemon is probably going to turn a little bit blue in the disc with the green, uh, green color of the disc. Um, Jeff, we're going to uh, a little silicone. Got such a small cup of. Dark dungeon here, I'm going to do barely a drop. I'm going to do two drops. And my big colors here. And one drop. And my green. I'm going to do one more in yellow to get, hopefully get that yellow to kind of be smaller cells because of the fact that it's going to turn bluish on this disc. Um, and then we're just going to Literally just kind of turn it over. Oh, sugar. You used to have a trash can there, now I have a tripod. Trash can's over there. Just stir it through a couple times and just get it stirred through. So I've said this in some of my videos before and mm -hmm. something I'm still learning, but. Silicone oil is not critical to creating cells. Cells will create themselves when this color comes up through this color, and that will uh, develop the cells naturally. Silicone oil was going to help facilitate that process. So people tell you that silicone oil creates cells. That's not actually 100% correct. Um, if you guys are interested, this I'm going to do a... I did a dirty one the last one, I guess I'll do a flip cup on this one, but. So all this is, it, th these glue beds this way anyway, not, you know, your clear glue beds where you're blowing dye around is something totally different, but as far as the white glue beds and the straight flow trial beds, and doing it this way, we're gonna pour this into a mason jar uh, and then flip it. They're all just versions of acrylic pour paintings. Um, which I've done a couple of just with acrylic paint. Same idea. It's still a cell board. Cell. Oh, um, 
But yeah, there it's just versions. There's a dirty pour. There's a split split cup pour. There's kiss pours. There's uh, flip cups. There's traveling cups. You know, um, you know, if you guys are interested, do some research on acrylic pour painting and just apply it to uh, pour, putting it in a pan and, and throwing a disc in there as opposed to whatever they do on, uh, you know, typically a canvas. Uh, and I'll try to do some more, try to get back into getting some more videos up and uh, uh, did a dirty pour, this will be a flip cup. I'll do a kiss pour and, and a couple other methods here soon. So, um, so at this point we're gonna put our dye into our jar. Best I can tell, the more individual times you pour each color, the smaller the cells are going to be, the, 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 the uh, busier the, the, the bed is going to be. Um, and I would like this to not be like crazy busy because the disc is already busy, the, the stamp is. So um, I'm going to kind of pour in big, uh, large amounts of the uh, neon lemon and the pansy small amounts in between of the dark dungeon and the key line and uh, hopefully get kind of a, a, a less busy cell bed. So that being said, just gonna pour nice and slow. I've also found that if I pour these really fast, I think it also is creating smaller cells. I'm gonna put a probably a good half of money on lemon. Just a little dark dungeon you can see, not nearly as much. Um, we're gonna go big on the pansy as well. Okay. 
ourselves a jar full of dyed float trial. Silicone nut. So we'll do a flip cup. So this is the name in the class. Just gonna flip the cup. Bam. How good a job that GoPro does of really capturing. It's pretty wicked. Sorry, I was just in New Hampshire for two weeks. It's wicked awesome. Many times as I try to level this bench, it just never. See, the bench is level. I think the pan sometimes gets a little sideways so cool like even down in there it's pretty rad you can see I mean even though we use very little bit of pansy or a uh, dark dungeon you know it still came through pretty good which is exactly what I was looking for kind of an in-betweener on some of these uh, on the other colors right so uh, we're gonna hit it with the torch pop these bubbles all those glue bubbles, air bubbles, that's really what they are. So there's bubbles, uh, if you leave the bubbles, when you put the disc down, it'll pop the bubble, but no dye will take uh, right there. So, yeah, this is, this is a keeper, for show. So this, the cells will kind of continue to develop um, as it sits uh, a little. I think with glue beds, with white glue beds that happens more. Um, but I keep seeing little bubbles here and there pop up. And every time a bubble pops, it creates a new cell. So you're letting a color from underneath uh, come through, whatever that top color is. So. We'll hit her again, it's 12.30. Put a disc in like an hour ago, I think. One trick I figured out because there are times when I forgot so many discs going and I've forgotten to check something I'm pretty good about always taking a picture of the bed uh, before I put the disc in so obviously you can check the details on the picture that'll tell me what time I took the pic I can usually figure out from there it's been five minutes ten minutes whatever so um, we're just gonna roll the disc in uh, into the bed I'll let it sit for five or 10 um, and hit it with the torch again and uh, we'll uh, pop it in. All right. This isn't the best camera angle, sorry. I'll work on that. Torch it up one more time, try to get all those last bubbles. We're gonna drop her. I'm gonna roll it in. I'm gonna put it straight down. Um, kind of want to bottom to front. Try to potentially not get any air caught again underneath of it. So and then I put just the tiniest bit of weight on there. I have a little bit run over on the edge here. I don't know if you probably can't see it, but. Try to avoid that, but it sometimes happens. But this keeps just enough weight to keep the disc right to the very edge. Um, and then I usually spin by the back to all my discs, so we'll do something to cover that up. No big deal. Alright. So, uh, if you enjoyed, I will uh, be back with uh, the pool and the finished product. Um, and we'll try to record a little bit of the spin dies. Not a great place to record either, but work on that. All right, y'all. Appreciate it. Peace.